For three years, Hagler saw Hearns in his future as far back as 1982. They were scheduled to meet, but a Hearns hand injury intervened. My corner now go for injury. And when I go in there, I want to be in tip-top condition and great health. Finally, the fight was canceled. Hagler was livid. And he was going to make $2 million. He turned down $2 million. The first beginning, Ray, he started complaining about his little baby pinky. You know how many people will give a million dollars for that little baby pinky? They cut that thing off. And come April 15, and three rounds, I would be the greatest. And Tommy said, I'm going to be laying down there, and his hands are going to be raised. I feel almost the same way, but when the smoke clears, because I'm coming out smoking, as you know, but uh, when the smoke clears, it be my hands that will be raised. After three long years, the war of words will be settled amidst the neon of Las Vegas, Nevada. Hagler and Hearns have descended upon Caesar's Palace to end their dispute and treat the public to the fight of the year. The hype is over and the drama begins as we await the opening bell between two great champions, marvelous Marvin Hagler and Thomas Hearns. And the entourage now of Thomas Hearns making its way toward the ring here. And Hearns, of course, surrounded by many admirers from the city of Detroit. And there's a good look at Thomas Hearns. Very interesting to note, he was very, very loose when we saw him in his locker room before the fight. Well, Tom was very relaxed, very confident. And uh, he didn't have any test look on his face. He seemed to know exactly where he was and exactly what's going to happen. So Thomas Hearns looking all business, of course, and it has been the want of marvelous Marvin Hagler to make his, make his opponent wait in the ring. And, of course, everyone having anything to do with this fight will try to avoid just such a circumstance. Got to be a definite case of nerves on both parts here. And Larry Merchant, we talked briefly with Sugar Ray Leonard at the start of this program about just how each man holds up to the big event. I'm sure you have some thoughts on that subject. I don't see any reason to question at this stage of their careers that they can't handle an event of this magnitude and that's one of the reasons why it's become such a big event that they have proven themselves uh, and that everybody expects to see a contest here uh, like all fights decided on the merits of the fighters decided by their strength decided by their styles decided by their will uh, those are the factors that will decide this fight. It's a long trip, Ray, from the locker room into the ring here at Caesars Palace, set up here in the parking lot. What are the thoughts that a fighter has making this long journey through the crowd? Well, Barry, so many things go through a fighter's mind, especially once he's headed towards the ring. The fact of the matter is, all the things that he say, all the verbal assaults that he's made against his opponent or challenger, well, now he can live up to that. With Thomas, Tommy made a lot of uh, verbal assaults to Hagler and Hagler did the same thing. But I, people think this will be a full-out process. I think something's going to happen in the very first round because these guys know there's so much at stake. Larry Merchant, let me ask you one thing. There was some speculation during the course of this past week here in Las Vegas that Tommy Hearns might have done some damage to an already injured right hand. Any elaboration on that? I don't know of anything, that, anything that's factual. Everybody knows that he's had some problems along the way with his hands. Uh, you know, he has the build of a thoroughbred, uh, and sometimes he hits people on the head, and, uh, and his hands have hurt. And as you recall, he was once laid off for uh, many months because of a hand injury, and I think he wears extra protection for his hand when he's sparring. So perhaps that gave uh, some speculation to uh, that there was something wrong with the hand. Hagler coming toward the ring now, his trainers, the Petronellis, they've been together for 18 long years. And this, of course, is the culmination of 18 years of hard work. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, of course, he had his game face on Ray somewhere around Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. And he, and he appeared to be very relaxing. He was able to talk to, to the press and meet with some of the uh, his fans. He's very, very serious about this. No joviality as there was in the locker room of Thomas Hearns a little bit earlier. Marvin Hagler has been business since we got here on Thursday. He has done the obligatories, as you mentioned. He's talked to the press. And the crowd definitely seems to be more in support of the champion than they do the challenger, Thomas Hearns. The crowd is very supportive of Hagler. Um, and another thing to bring out, this fight here, because Hagler searches for recognition, he thought he would get it after Roberto Duran, but I think this fight here has enough significance to give
doesn't have what he wants and what he desires. People are saying that he was too conservative against Roberto Duran, and you have to have the feeling that tonight he cannot be conservative. He can't be. He has to be aggressive. He has to initiate authority right away. And again, Brian, the first round will be a key round to, to pretty much know what's going to happen in the, in the fight. There's a look at the record of Marvelous Marvin Hagler, 62-2. and two. He's got 50 knockouts. This, of course, is 11th title defense. He dearly wants to break the record set by Carlos Monzon. So that is the story of Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Historically, Tommy Hearns has been the faster starter of the two. Well, Tommy has always jumped on top of his, his opponents because he's always overshadows his opponents because of his height and reach advantage. Here's a look at the tail of the tape, and you talk about the reach advantage, and it's really not quite as great as you might have expected. Really only a three-inch a three inch reach advantage for Thomas Hearns over Marvin Hagler. I'd like to make a comment about the weight. When Tommy Hearns fought Ray Leonard, he weighed less than Ray Leonard, trying to prove he was a real welterweight. Now he weighs more than Hagler, trying to prove <laughs> he's a real middleweight. <laughs> And here's a look at the common opponents of these two. And again, there's little to choose. Roberto Duran, probably the most significant, but perhaps Thomas Hearns got Duran a little bit more on a down than he did on an up. And here, of course, is that tool that we've been using here at HBO for now three occasions. Yeah, this is our computer toy, and it will give you uh, some kind of a, a look at how many punches these fellas throw. You see Hagler against Duran, Hagler against Hampshire, roughly 50 punches per round. The same thing for Hearns, as you'll notice. Roughly 50 punches per round, landing somewhere between 20 and 30. So that'll be some kind of yardstick as we move along. And the rules for tonight's fight, and they are as most championship fights, the 10-point must system. Three knockdown rule, of course, is waived. So, too, the standing gate count. There will no be no standing gate count. You can only be saved by the bell in the final round. Three judges, of course, scoring the fight. That has been a vote of contention, incidentally, with Marvin Hagner. But right now, what's left, really, is to get on with it. So let's go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Call, for all the pre-fight festivities. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials are signed by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next event of the evening. The judges are Dick Young of Los Angeles, California, Herb Santos of Reno, Nevada, and Harry Gibbs of England. The timekeeper is Charlie Roth, counting at the knockdowns, Jane Broadfoot. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Donald Romeo, Flip Omansky, and Charles Filippini. Your referee for the next event of the evening is Mr. Richard Steele. This is the main event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the red corner, the challenger, the WBC super welterweight champion, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing 159 and three quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 40 wins, one defeat with 34 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Thomas the Hitman. And in the blue corner, fighting out of Brockton, Massachusetts, weighing 159 and one quarter pounds, with a professional record of 60 wins, two defeats, two draws, and 50 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. All right, Pat. Pat. Goody. Let's go. Okay, I gave both fighters their instructions in the dressing room. I'm just cautioning you now. Obey my command at all times. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. As Ray said, Tommy Hearns usually likes to establish dominance early in the fight. I expect for that reason that Marvin Hagler will look for a camera will look to come on and counterpunch at least in this first and perhaps through the first several rounds, looking for an opening if Hearns opens himself up. The early rounds could really dictate how the He'd love to be able to pin Hearns on the ropes if he can. A more aggressive start by Hagler. Look at him right for the body. Marvin Hagler only wants the body. He bangs Marvin. Oh, Hearns may have hurt him with a right hand. Hearns on the right. right. Hearns hits him with an uppercut. Hagler he's hurt. is hurt. Hagler is stunned. Hearns got inside. Hit him with a right uppercut.
Hagler's got it. Marvin ties him up. Marvin Hagler is still hurt. So it was Hagler coming out like a bullet. A good left by Hagler, but Hearns didn't flinch. Marvin going for the body. Wild first round. Wow, what a shot. And it was Hagler who initiated it, not Thomas Hearns. And a left by Hagler. Hagler. Hearns comes back. Another right. That one stunned Hearns. What a first minute of the fight. Tommy Hearns has been able to drop that right hand in, and it has hurt Hagler, a surprise to many people. Another right hand from Hearns. Hearns moving. Hagler still pursuing, comes in with a right. Missing with a left hook. Here's where I believe Hagler should turn to righty. He could block that right hand easier, and he would land his own left hook. Hearns with a devastating punch. Swelling near Hagler's left eye. Again, Tommy trying to come inside the hands of oh, Hagler. Low blow by Hearns. Hagler's still looking for the body. A right by Hagler. Good right got in. He has Hearns where he'd love to keep him on the ropes, but Tommy comes off oh. easily. Another good right by Hearns. Hagler is now shaking those right hands off, though, Al. He was stung a little early, and he's normally a slow starter. He's also bleeding. Hagler is cut. Hagler is cut. Bridge of the nose. Hagler hitting him low. He is banging the body well. He is taking shots to the head. He blocks that right. Hearns tries to come in with the uppercut, and Hagler ties him up with a minute to go in a wild first round. but Hearns trying to box his way out. Half a minute to go in round one. This How is, far can this one go? That's very far in his pace. This is where Hagler wants him, but Hearns counter-punching off those ropes fairly effectively. Oh, Tremendous first round. Hagler pinning him to the rope, working on him, but Hearns uppercutting again. Hagler bloody. A tremendous sensational first round as Hearns gets hurt. Hearns got stunned. Hagler was stunned early in the round. Great first round. Wow. Incredible. Perhaps one of the best in middleweight history. That was an entire fight in compass in three minutes. Emphatic over every punch that's thrown. Hagler 
despite that least disadvantages, has been able to get into Hearns more so than I think most people expected. For one simple reason, good left hook by Hagler. He took the best Hearns could offer, and he did come in. He's, he's getting through that right hand, even though he's getting hit with it. Halfway through, round two. Most of this round is a righty. Now he switches southpaw and lands. Not as effective as a righty as I thought, but now it's a southpaw. The jab lands well. That right jab. Punch it, get high, punch coming it in with the left. Right, Richard Shields saying, punch back. your way out, punch your way out. A key element now is Hagler is working when he's on the inside. He's not just holding. He is working the body of Tommy Hearns. Looks awkward. His legs look like they're not there. A little rubbery here in round two. Tommy, though, fluid and moving. Trying to get inside again. The cut opens up over Hagler's for it. And the blood begins to trickle down. Hagler working inside. Now up top. Half a minute to go in round two. Oh, what a left. He's trading with him. Hagler comes back to the right or left. And another right. He has Hearns in trouble on the ropes. Tommy trying to punch his way off the ropes. Hagler wants to keep him there. Goes to the body. Hagler throws low blows. Marvin Hagler wants to turn this into an alley war, and he's done it. Another low blow. Richard Steele may take points away soon, but will it matter? Second round coming to an end. Hagler bloody, but very much unbound. End of round two. Got to cut a band. Cut up, just box them. Stay away and box them. Just box them. Just get your second man and relax like nothing. Man, it's just Colin Jones. Just think, pal. Just box them. When you get through with your shot, move off to one side or the other. You're getting hit on tail end punches. You understand? You can hear Manny Stewart talking to her. They work on the cut of Hagler. And the Petronelli's good cut men, Goody and Pat, have done an excellent job on the cuts of Hagler. What a shock that that man initiated this war right from the beginning. And you know what? I thought he would do well as a righty. He has done better as a southpaw, and he may stay at that. Again, Stewart telling Hearns to box. As you say, though, Hagler turning it into a street fight. Well, he turns righty. He wants it to be a street fight. Listen, Marvin Hagler has been rough inside. He's thrown some low blows. He has thrown some elbows. Don't pass, don't pass. But you know what? Now the right is getting there, but it's not hurting Hagler. We've got our answer, I think, to some extent. Tommy has been, has been hard-pressed to hurt him with that right. Stunned him early, but not in the last round or two. Very early. Adam Stunned has him cut. But it was Hagler doing the damage in round two. And now, just as we thought might happen, Tommy Hearns was hurt early, so he is boxing. Now, he has good boxing skills. He did this against Sugar Ray. Can Hagler get to him in this posture? Some people thought, as he don't again hold, becomes hold. off balance, some thought that if if Hearns stayed outside and stayed on his bicycle, it would become a dull fight with Marvin chasing him. But Marvin has been able to corner him, and when Marvin gets him in the corner, he is roughhousing him well. Again, Hagler is all bloodied. Time is called by Richard Steele to send Hagler over to the ring doctor. He's calling the ring doctor in. The last thing in the world Hagler wants is the fight to be stopped. The doctor looks at it. Back comes Hagler with a wild left hand. It has to be impeding his vision with the right eye. You never know it, though. Tremendous right. Hearns appears rubbery. He well, appeared that way in the second round. You know, Richard Steele is breaking these fighters very quickly. That's uncharacteristic of him. It's hurting Hagler because he wants to work inside. Carnes is smiling, but he's taking shots. Another right hand. Hearns turns his back, takes another right. Hearns in deep trouble again. Hearns is down. Hearns is down in the third round and on his back. And he's not going to beat the count. I don't believe. Tommy Hearns tries to get up. Stop this fight. Does he get up? He His just does no. He can't continue. It's Hagler, full of blood. Blood, no doubt, impeding his vision, stopping him in the third round after Hearns almost ended it on a first round knockout. It didn't go very far, but it was a beauty. 
And Tommy Hearns predicted a knockout in the third. Instead, it is Marvin Hagler, and we certainly hope Tommy Hearns will be all right. He is still wobbly. What a shot. Instead of Hearns initiating wild early action, it is this man. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. So close to being knocked out in the first round. Withstood the barrage.